Hey, what's up? It's Joey from Riftweaver, and I'm here with this week's devlog for Tales of Fablecraft, and we're actually getting ready to drop a release this week. Uh, before we get into that, I do want to do some housekeeping here, as per usual. We're going to be shifting these from weekly on Mondays to weekly on Fridays. We're going to be calling them Fablecraft Fridays sometimes, if we remember to call them that, and we're just going to be running them every single Friday instead of every single Monday. Uh, that means you won't have an update this Friday, since this Monday counts as this week's, but we'll be back the following Friday with our next update. Uh, same type of information, same same format, just a different day of the week. The other piece of news is, of course, the update. So we're getting ready to launch version 0.15.0. Uh, this is an incremental update. It adds some new features, some new free content, and a lot of changes that people have been asking for uh, since we launched. This is our second update, not counting the hotfix, uh, but it's the first of the larger updates and not the largest that we're going to make. So we're going to preview some of the stuff that's coming in this update today, uh, and we're going to be going through maybe not everything but the bigger stuff if you want everything of course you'll be able to find that in the patch notes patch notes will go live with the update on steam and we'll make sure to share them on discord as well so if you're not on our discord already that's discord.gg slash fablecraft and make sure you get the fablecraft updates tag from discord uh, when you join so that you can actually follow along when we drop those patch notes for the release once it's out uh, a word about the timing. So I did say this week, uh, the way that we're working is we have QA kind of running through the final check of this update, probably while I'm recording this video, that's what they're doing. Uh, if they find anything and it's major, then we're gonna have to fix it. And that might kick it back by a day or two, depending on the scale and severity of the bug. Uh, but if they give us, the, give us the thumbs up, we'll release it as soon as we can. Um, so it might be, you know, a day or it might be that day, depending on when QA does the review and what they find. So as soon as the update's live, we'll let you know. If for some reason it gets delayed out of this week, we'll let you know about that too, but I wouldn't count on it. We're looking on track for this one. So with that, let's dig into the update. First up, we're giving you a new foe. If you saw the thumbnail to this video, or if you're in the Steam blog post, you've probably already seen it. This is the Blade Dancer. The Blade Dancer is a level four enemy, and it's coming not as part of the Brawler pack and not as part of a paid edition. This is in the base game, so every GM will have access to the Blade Dancer. Blade Dancer is pretty cool. Um, it's level four, so it's meant to kind of be something a bit stronger than, than a base enemy. Uh, it'll be really good if you're playing up against some level four mages, or maybe if you need a group of Blade Dancers to accompany a Shadow bandit or even a rue nightshade uh, they make a really good addition to the battlefield uh, and we did something really interesting with the blade dancers so this work is done by justine cruz uh, and we intentionally made it so that the background had just a hint of coral coast in it but we wanted it to be relatively homeland agnostic that way you could use it freely in your campaign and the background wouldn't look out of place so yes there's some coral coast flavor and of course those who know their mythos lore uh, know that this is the markings of a, of a coral coaster uh, but the blade dancer can be used just about anywhere as long as the GM tells a good story with it and we think that's pretty darn cool so again this is free if you want to see more detail about it hit the blog post which we'll link below but that's a new addition and it will be available with this update Speaking of foes and battle maps, uh, this was one that was requested as soon as Fablecraft came out. I mean, maybe it was out for a couple hours and immediately GMs were like, hey, why can't I do this? It was a feature that we were intending to get done, uh, but we just bumped it up quickly because so many people asked and it was a relatively easy thing for us to put together. But the hero tokens, you know, the player tokens that go around your, your hero when you're in battle. Uh, previously, GMs didn't have access to those, and now they do. You can only apply one token at a time, but you can apply any of the tokens that you actually purchase in the marketplace. Uh, and, you know, if you feel like throwing a birthday party for that dragon, you can. And also on the GM side, we made a lot of changes to the GM facing demo. So there's the GM demo, and in this demo, if you've played it already, you know that towards the end, one of the things that we throw out is what happens when your players go rogue. And one solution that we give, which we know it's not perfect and not necessarily good, is to just put up an impossible role to kind of put a wall in front of players and get them back on track. This is something that we did for two key reasons, right? First of all, we heard from very, very novice GMs that aren't ready to really role play with their players, that they wanted something to just have players stop. We agree, it's not the best advice. If you are at all experienced, you should be working with your players and kind of riffing with them and not throwing up impossible roles, but getting them into different situations based on what they're doing and being accommodating for their wants as characters and as players, right? Um, the other reason was we just simply ran out of time so the way game dev works is we're always working up against deadlines we needed to get the gm demo done and we needed to hit our release date and this was the version of the gm demo that we cooked up 
So now that's changing. Of course, we've heard from people that they didn't really like how railroady it is, and those folks were right. It is too railroady. Uh, consider this the second draft of the GM demo. What you just played was the first, and now we're actually taking some of the railroad off. We're encouraging players and GMs to work together and to sort of tell a bigger story, uh, not necessarily to throw up an impossible and say no, but to work with players and put them into situations that are maybe a little bit more difficult or not something that they anticipated when they made their weird or crazy or unique decision. Um, and we think it's a pretty cool fix for the demo. Like I said, it's probably going to be iterated on more, but this is just the next evolution. And thanks to your feedback, we've made it. So we appreciate it. Finally, I want to talk to you guys about inventory updates. So this is the first of probably several rounds of updates we're making to the inventory. Uh, three big ones here with this with these changes. They're not massive, but they are really nice. If you've run a campaign before, you've probably wanted to be able to do this. So let's start with this. First, when you grab an item in an inventory, if you just click on it once, if you're looking at the inventory, you'll get a full screen view of the artwork. Um, and if the item's text is longer, you'll be able to scroll down and read it. It's not just a single pop-up, it's a nice full bleed image. Second, if you grab a piece of inventory and you're the GM and you go to drag it, you get multiple options now. Instead of having to drag it all the way over to the player portrait, you'll get boxes on the main screen for the players to gift the inventory directly to them. And you'll also get this nice full screen view. This is full screen for everyone. So you drag the inventory out, drop it, everyone gets onto the full screen inventory view, just like if you were going to a different location or seeing an NPC, and then you'll just drag that location back out to change it back to the original view. This is really nice. I don't know how many times as GM I would want to show people the wolf whistle or want to show people the Riz Fizz and couldn't. I had to wait until it was in someone's inventory and then everyone would look, not get the full screen art. So this is a way better solve for the inventory solution. And it's, I think, pretty cool. We have some beautiful inventory items and it's nice that we're able to see these in full screen. That's it for this week's devlog. Thank you for watching. Thank you for hanging out. Of course, you can join us on Discord. That's discord.gg slash fablecraft. And like I said before, version 0.15.0 will be out we hope this week. Uh, so get into the Discord and pay attention on Steam. And once the update's live, we'll make sure an announcement goes over and we'll do the uh, typical patch notes so that you can dive into all the little details that have changed and give those patch notes a read. We try to make them a little bit more fun uh, than your bog standard patch notes where it's just like, this was fixed. You know, we maybe have a little bit of fun with it. I'm Joey. Thanks for hanging out. See you next week.